Hello everyone, in this first uh, overview video for Waterline 4.0 we're going to go over some of the new features that we have included with our latest update for our Waterline Pro product. So starting off, you're going to see that we've included a brand new map that shows off our brand new uh, Waterline Ocean Actor that we can see right there. So first of all, there isn't much going on on the scene because uh, the simulation is driven during uh, playtime. So once we enable that, we can see that we're now getting displacement waves and normal waves that are being simulated using an FFT solver that also works with our previous shallow water simulation. And we can get some pretty good results with our uh, existing built-in buoyancy functions. This also works with our uh, waterline uh, post-processing uh, effects as well. So let's see some of the new features that we have and how we can control them. So we're just going to hide some of the uh, older features that we have. We've done previous videos on them and how we could use them. So now let's just focus on our ocean simulation panel. First of all we have two render targets that are exposed that sort of give us the results of the values that you can see below. Uh, if we select the magnifying glass, we could go to the folder selection where they're based. Uh, they are fully exposed and you could use them in your own materials if you want. For example, if you wanted to create your own ocean, you can create, you can delete the current one and drop in an FFT solver, which will uh, work with these render targets. And you can apply these uh, textures to your own material and uh, build up your own ocean from there if you'd like to create a fully customized solution for yourself. So they do look a little bit different because the values of uh, this particular actor are set differently. So this is a great building block to have if you want to create, again, your own ocean. So now we're going to go back to our pre-made ocean. So we have a very robust solution that allows us to simulate several different uh, simulation sizes, all the way from 64 to 1024. Right now we're using a 512 uh, texture, but uh, we could switch to 128. Uh, there is something that you should know. Uh, doing this will create some errors that can be fixed by uh, manually adjusting the size of the two exposed render targets. And now when we hit play, we can see the results are much better looking. We do get some pixelization because we are running a fairly low resolution texture that is uh, quite a bit enlarged. So um, we're going to go over how we can overcome some of these uh, graphical issues a bit later on. Uh, but for now, let's just dock them to the side, uh, revert them to their original sizes, and uh, we can move on to some of the other parameters and what they do. So first of all we have our simulation scale which basically dictates what um, what is the area of the ocean that we are calculating here. Right now we have 1000 units. We could go for 400 units and you could see in the texture in the corner that now we have a much more detailed uh, ocean. However, we have lost some of the height of the waves and uh, we can bring that up with the amplitude which dictates the height of the waves at the simulation stage. If we can increase this, we can bring back our wave height. Maybe increase it a little bit more. So this is pretty great once again for increasing details and in some cases it can remove the pixelation from some resolutions. However, in other cases it can, imp it can increase the visible tiling of the FFT texture going over the ocean. Next we have wind speed which controls the um, size of the waves via the swells. For example, a wind speed of 5 will give small ripples that are similar to what you would see in a lake. 
Uh, using FFT to solve this is a bit of an overkill, but it is something that you can do. Next we could go with a higher value of something like 20, and now we're seeing uh, larger swells that are more akin to a storm. Something to remember though is going with extremely high values can create some artifacts like in this case where the waves are really sharp and they sort of flat out. That is because our, of the way that we've uh, efficiently structured our buffers that there is only so much information that you can write on it. It makes them a bit faster but it does introduce artifacts such as these and uh, we're going to look in a second on how we can overcome them. So at around 30, with our current settings, we can get some pretty good looking stormy ocean. Next we have wave amplitude, which as we mentioned covers the height of the waves. Going with extremely high values here can break the effect in some cases. A great way to think about this value is that it is more or less works out as a ratio of the FFT resolution and simulation scale. Next we have the wave speed, which controls the speed of the resolution. This can be pretty useful if you're using a different uh, size of tiling. For example, at a value of 1, we could... Oops, we just changed the height. So at a value of 1, we can see that the water is moving at a much slower rate. And then we have wave height, wave choppiness, and wave FFT. Now these particular settings work on the, the texture level after the simulation is completed. So for example with wave height we can further modify and stretch the displacement uh, map that is finally generated. And uh, like we previously mentioned this can be pretty useful in overcoming uh, the choppiness uh, flat tops that we got with high ap amplitude. So for example if we put in the value of 60 again getting the flat tops again. So one way to overcome this is that we're going to decrease the amplitude, which will lower the height at the simulation level. But what we can do now is add that height at the texture level. So by doubling it again, we can see that we're getting now uh, really high and spiky waves and none of these flat out areas. So now we're just going to revert everything back to normal. Uh, next we have wave choppiness, which uh, controls the overall shape of the wave. So at a zero you can see that it's quite uh, blobby looking soft. At something like 10, we could see that some of the waves are uh, crashing over each other. Uh, the At high values this tends to look a bit uh, bugged, but Overall, it, it does give an extra bit of artistic uh, freedom to get just the waves that you like. Uh, next we have uh, wind direction, which controls the direction of the wind at the simulation level. And finally, we do have a solution for an FFT buoyancy, where uh, the buoyancy is driven by the FFT simulation, but be warned that this is a very expensive calculation and it's not really suitable for real-time environments. Below it you will see the setting for the buoyancy height, height which is something that you will need to manually adjust uh, because the wave height is ultimately driven by both the amplitude and the wave height at the texture level. Finally, we have introduced an FFT simulation delay setting. So what this actually does is introduce a really minor delay in, in how the simulation is running. For example, right now our project is running at 60 frames per second, while our simulation is running at something around 57 to 58. Now there is no visual difference 
with such a small delay, but it can be useful in trying to squeeze out every little bit of performance. So yeah, it's something that we can disable right now and see that there is almost no visual difference. But ultimately, in some cases, it can make a difference on slower machines. So let's see how we can change some of these settings to create a larger, more stormy looking ocean. So to start us off, let's let's create the let's change the FFT resolution to something low, like 128. And we're just going to resize our render targets in the corner and hit play. So we're getting pretty good results already. So something I'd like to change right now is the simulation scale to something a bit smaller, like 400. We can get a bit more detail. We have lost quite a bit of height, so we're just going to increase the amplitude quite a bit. So now we're getting similar results to what we had before, but we're just going to push it a little bit further and trying to get a larger, more uh, stormy looking sea. So we're going to increase the texture height to 10. And let's make the waves themselves a bit bigger. So this is looking pretty good, but we could see that we have lost some of the original shape of the wave. So as we have increased the height, so we must also increase the choppiness a little bit. A general rule of thumb is that the choppiness should be higher, should be a value that is higher than the height. So yeah, right now we've brought some of the older shape back. Oh, hello there. But right now, uh, let's increase the wind speed as well, so we can get some of those larger, more uh, bunched up uh, swells that you would see in an ocean. Uh, let's adjust the height a little bit as well. So we're going to lower the amplitude a little bit. So this is looking quite good. And yeah, these settings were a bit better. So now that we have the overall general shape of the wave and the normals, uh, we have lost quite a bit of detail in our water. Be and that is because ultimately everything you see on screen is currently driven by the FFT simulation and that is only going at uh, 128 pixels. So something we could do is uh, turn on our smaller scale normals which is a new uh, material feature that we added. So if we type S normals, it's something that we can enable. And that adds an additional layer of uh, animated normals. And we have settings for tiling, strength, speed, and texture. Uh, whoops, changed the wrong setting there. So I'd like uh, to make the normals a bit stronger. So that brings a really nice break up to the overall shape of the waves and uh, maybe increase the speed a little bit. So now we're getting a quite a nice looking ocean, similar to what we had before. But again, we're running at 128, whereas originally this particular uh, map has the setup for 512. So this is many, many times uh, less detail computationally, but we're still getting pretty good results. So just a few small adjustments to the detailed normals. So yeah, these are just uh, another set of settings. Uh, we do have a couple of more as well to really fine tune the color for the ocean near the horizon and near the player. Uh, there is a bit of a note that I should mention here is that 
during really large waves currently, especially with high levels of choppiness, it could cause some um, artifacts in terms of uh, the waterline post-process effects where the water intersec intersection may not be quite accurate. Uh, we are aware of this and we're working to improve it, but it is something that you should be aware of. One additional uh, thing I wanted to mention right now is that because we're running two simulations at the same time, in some cases this can get uh, pretty taxing. So uh, while, in the pr while we just looked at how we could lower the settings of the FFT simulation, let's look at what we could do for our shallow water simulation to make it run faster. Now I've changed the resolution and texture uh, resolution for the simulation by quite a lot from the original of the project. And that is because ultimately with these settings, because the way the normals are mixed, you end up getting a lot of smaller waves that are ultimately either lost or end up looking extremely noisy. So for example, if we go to a higher setting, like this, we could see that the waves are detailed, but they don't exactly look very realistic compared to the ones with the ocean. Normally you'd expect the waves to be a bit more uh, softer and spread out and die out a little bit quicker from all the interference. So in this case, uh, less is more. And this is a pretty uh, strong way to increase performance on older, older machines as well.